what's up go getters welcome back to Money, and today we continue with our our discussion about the middle class so that's a big discussion and today i want to go a little bit light so i want us to discuss about the seven uncommon <laughs> this one here is very uncommon seven uncommon uh, things that show that you're truly a middle class. And I say it's uncommon because today we are doing away with living paycheck to paycheck. We are doing away with um, lifestyle debt. We are doing away with not having an emergency fund. Whatever, leave those things alone. What we're going to be looking at today specifically is things that are very, very subtle, but actually show that yes, you, my friend, are in the middle class. And the very first thing I would say is that you buy things you like buying things, but you hardly use the expensive ones, all right? So what you have is often that you do buy things, you don't use the expensive ones like shoes. So you see that good pair of shoes that you have? The most expensive one is kind of designated to, I don't know, fancy occasions or certain kinds of places and things like that. When it comes to perfume, the same, same thing. You, you buy them but you never use them or you use them only for very specific occasions and i remember at one point um my best friend rachel <laughs> so i had i had this shoe i had been bought for actually it wasn't my own and my best friend rachel was uh you know asking me you know why don't i see you in this shoe often and i was like you know it's my best shoe so it's very good quality so i wear it less then she was like that doesn't make any sense because if it's the best quality well, then you should wear it more right so yeah it's that thing of the middle class is you do you you when you buy things you really really use the expensive one that is um sign number one sign number two is that now you're in a place where you pirate less so when it comes to music when it comes to movies when it comes to you know things that would entertain you now you're in a place where you don't pirate as much you know why because finally <laughs> You can afford subscriptions. So now you, you do Spotify. You don't download music anymore to your phones. Now you do um, Netflix. You don't go to the guy in the movies to burn for you a show and whatnot. So that is exactly what you are talking about today. Things like those are very subtle, but really show that you are really truly in the middle class. So that is point number two. Number three is that often you focus on brand names. Now, let me give you an example. When you're buying a TV, let's just say you want to buy a TV. What do you look at? You know, other than the specs, fine, you will want maybe full HD, you will want it to be 43 inch, you will have several specs that you want. But should you find a cheaper TV that is Cinex or Skyworth, you know, if it's simply not LG or Samsung or Sony, are you going to buy it? Or how focused are you on brand names? Because there's someone who is going to sit here and argue, oh, you know, these brands, we don't know that they're going to work, blah, 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 and what have you. But the truth is, these brands actually, sometimes some of them work. I remember the first time I got an Infinix phone. My good God, that was quite, it was quite a challenge. <laughs> I couldn't explain that to anyone and nobody could understand Infinix. Why Infinix? And it's because it wasn't among the big brand names. So this was many years ago, probably six or seven years ago, and it wasn't a big brand name. And for that reason, people didn't think it's important to spend that kind of money or any kind of money actually on Infinix, all right? And then um, when it comes to the next point, it's this one is common for everyone, I think. But this one specifically for the middle class, the level of point number four is, is very, very high. And this is the fear of losing your job. Now you have a whole lifestyle that is purely penned on whether or not you're going to make the next paycheck. So the fear of losing your job is so, so, so deep seated. It's so immense that you cannot, you cannot imagine losing your job. Yeah, so that is sign number four. You cannot imagine if you lose your job today, you feel like everything that you like and everything that you do and your entire lifestyle is going to come crumbling down. And of course, this is because you have not built around you other income streams. And so anytime that you, you're looking at a pay cut, anytime that you're looking at you know losing your job, losing one month's income, two months' income, that, that really, really scares the hell out of you. Okay, point number four. Number five, um, and it's going to be crazy. Number five is that 
you your house or your garage or somewhere you just have a room that is full of nonsense and i do say this with love best believe so you have a house that is full of just crap you know old bikes old tvs um, a lot of junk basically so you just have this garage or you have a room in your house or there's a corner in your house that you just keep things from 20 years ago from your old fridge your old cooker there's a lot of stuff that you're simply not letting go that my friends is another sign that you are in the middle class um and i know it's an unconventional one but best believe it actually does work all right so that's point number five uh if we move along to point number six is that you like to eat out and not just to eat out, you like to eat out in trendy places. So you often uh, find yourself looking for what is the hot thing on IG, what is the hot thing um, with YouTubers and influencers, what is the hot places, what is trending at the moment, and that is the place that you would prefer to eat out. And eating out already is something that you have, you know, I mentioned this before in this same series, eating out is something that you have truly embedded in your lifestyle, so you have to eat out at least once a month, but... To be more specific, you like eating out in trendy places. So if you can get to where everyone else is going. And I've, I've, I've been caught, I've been caught with that whole madness where oh everyone is going to X and Y uh, restaurant and I also want to go to X and Y restaurant. That really, my friends, is a symptom that you have been caught up in the maze called uh, the middle class uh, trap. All right. So what I want you to do is give this video like if you are finding some value if there's something in here that you'd quite didn't see coming give this video a like as we move to the last point which is point number seven and the thing with point number seven it's so true it's a bit scary so it's and this is that you rent or you have a mortgage but you own your car so like the car is yours but the house not quite yet this is another sign that you're in the middle class it is a bit unconventional again, but it works. When you look around you, the people who are really in the middle class is people who often have a car because convenience and all these other things we convince ourselves, but do not own their own homes. And obviously, I do know the price of a car and a home isn't the same, but it really goes to show a lot of things that are happening with this, with this group called the middle class. And if I could give you a bonus point that I would want you to think about is that, you know, and make sure you comment down below if you agree or disagree. I found this quite interesting when I was doing the research. And it says that um, the middle class people enjoy sports with bigger balls. What does that mean? You enjoy sports like football, like basketball, like rugby, like rugby, all right? Sports with bigger balls. Well, the people who are beyond that, the rich, enjoy sports with smaller balls like tennis and golf. I didn't know that your sports could show which class you're in. Anyway, that is all for this particular video. I do hope you have enjoyed it. I'm going to be catching you guys next week. And until then, kick ass!